Word of restoration. Everybody make some noise this morning. Come on, y'all. I need you to stand to your feet. I need you to make some noise. Put your hands together. We are back in the house of the Lord. Can somebody make a joyful noise in this place this morning? Listen, welcome. We are doing something different. This is our word of restoration pre service. This is for you all that are watching online. You could not be here today, but we wanted to engage you this morning. I'm Benjamin Haupt. I am here with my brother. Tell them who you are, bro. I am Youth Pastor Caleb, and I am so excited to be here on yeah. this morning. Let's go. Benjamin, it has been 14 months. No, it hasn't. That's a long time. It's been a long Come on. See, we can't go there this morning. <laughs> But it has been a long time. But man, I'm so glad, and I know everybody else who's behind me is so glad yeah. that we are here again. The Lord has kept us yeah. for 14 months. For 14 months. If we don't have any other reason to be thankful, we can be thankful for that. Can you make Let's some go. noise? Hey, we might as well have church right now. We ain't we even got to wait till nine. We don't have to. Hey, on the count of three, I need y'all to make some noise and give some love to everybody that's watching online. One, two, three. So, yeah. listen, today we're doing something different. Okay. As you all know, seated, and you, yeah, you can take your seats. As you, as you all know, we're here. We started, this is our first in-person service yeah. since March of 2020. Long time. We're finally back, but we did not want to forget everyone who's watching virtually. Yeah. And so this is for you. This is our pre-service up until 9 a.m. And so we want you to get engaged. We want you to comment. We want you to like, share, all that good stuff. Matter of fact, if you're watching virtually, I just want you to let us know which city you are tuning in from. And everybody else who is behind me, take out your phone as yeah. well. You can get on Facebook or our YouTube. Uh, what else do we have? Uh, the church's website. Yeah. And I want you to get on there. You like, you comment, you share. Everybody get on there. So what we're doing is we're making everybody in the crowd today digital evangelists, right? Right. So we're, we're, we're assigning them the opportunity to send it out to a friend, family member, let them know not to show what they're missing, but to engage them so that we all can stay connected. Can somebody say amen? Amen. Hey, hey Pastor Kayla, we got Lisa Smith. She is tuning in. Hey, Miss Smith, uh, thank you for tuning in. Mom Perry is on here. She's, She's tuning here. in. Who else you see on your phone, bro? Man, I see Terrence Briscoe. Terrence, he, what's going he's on, He's coming man? in from Ace Time. See, he in Houston. Come on, Terrence. Miss, Appreciate you tuning in. Miss D. Renee Perry, all the way from Kingwood, Texas. Oh, let's go. M Mr. Welcome. Ronald Crowder, all the way from Missouri City, Texas. Come on, Ronald. Monique Lee, she put Mo City Mo in City. the house. Mo City. Mr. Juarez, he's in the building. Rose Sharon, Texas. Come Anybody on. else in Rose Sharon this morning? Oh. Look, they're tuning in from everywhere, man. Here, look. Don't forget, don't forget. So we have people in here, but we also have a special group of people in the overflow. Come on. Hey, thank you all for it. I know you weren't able to be in here in the building today, but even though you're still here in the overflow, we wanted to shout you out and let you know we're excited. We're glad you are here at Word of Restoration this morning. Hey, can we do this? Hey, I'm I want I want to hear from a few people in the audience. Let's do it. Just letting us know what does it mean to them to finally be back in the house. Pastor Kev, you got to be careful because if you pass the mic to anybody in here, we all got a 14 month testimony. <laughs> so you got to be careful, especially with us. You got to give us a time limit. Okay? Look, look, I, I trust this brother right okay, here. Okay, okay. Mr. Frank and, and your lovely wife, if y'all mind telling us what does it mean for you to finally be back in the house? And I'm just going to pass you my mic, sir. We're excited. The atmosphere is charged up. I mean, this is what we've been waiting on. The Saints. Amen. Amen. Can everybody else say amen? Let's go. I, can I, I'm going to ask somebody else as well. What, what, is, what is being in the house of the Lord today after all this time? What does it really mean to you? Can I ask you, sir? See, he ready to shout already, y'all. I, could, I couldn't pass him. He was going to make me give him the mic. Tell us why, what, 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 what's, what excites you about being in the house of the Lord today. It's like a father waiting on the birth of his first child. That's how excited I am. 
Come on. Yes, sir. So look, I have one of the one of the youth here at World of Restoration, and she wants to do the same thing as well. She'll let us know what does it mean for her to finally be back in the house of God. So just kind of come over this way. Uh, it is such a relief to be back in the house of God. Um, to be honest, I was one of those church members who was watching service with my pajamas on. Oops. Uh, so it feels good to be back all dressed up, praising God together, fellowshipping. And then I'll, I'm also waiting to be back in the GA10. Yeah, that'll be soon. Amen. Hey, Pastor Kayla, we got, we got Naya. She is tuning in today from Paraland. Am I saying that right, y'all? Paraland, Par Par she's tuning in from Paraland. But, oh, Pastor Kayla, there's one thing we can't forget. Okay. And this is the most important thing about our pre-service that we do on Sundays. We want to keep you connected, not only digitally, but spiritually as well. If you're watching us this morning and you have a prayer request, listen, we want to pray with you live and touch and agree with hundreds of other people on your behalf. So what I need you to do is I need you to jump in the comments and just post. It doesn't have to be long. doesn't have to be detailed. But if you, if you need Pastor Caleb and I, we are going to pray with you live this morning. So throw your prayer request in the chat so we can pray for you. Amen, amen, amen. And also, while, while they're doing that, for people who are in here, mm -hmm. you know, we want them to, to write their prayer request. But for you all that are in here, if you could, I see somebody's already doing it right now. But if you could, get your phone out, get your camera out, and I want you to take a selfie. I want you to take a selfie and put it on your social media account. And in the comments or in the post for that selfie, I want you to hashtag W-O-R-I-C return. Again, W-O-R-I-C yeah. return. So you and your family uh, that's right there together, just make your selfie. If you're by yourself, that's a real selfie. For real. Do it and put it on your for social real, for real. media. Everybody's doing it. Everybody's doing Pastor it. Pastor Caleb, I'm going to let you do the honors, man. We've got a prayer in? request in for Chaz's deliverance, man. Can you, can you start us off? a quick prayer for Chaz's deliverance this morning. Real quick, Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we are praying for Mr. Chaz's deliverance. Father God, you know everything that is going on in his life, and I pray that you're turning everything around for his good. In Jesus' name, I pray, amen. Amen. Pastor Caleb, another one, Crystal Hall, for her sister's deliverance. Can you touch and agree for her as well this yes, morning? Yes, sir, I would love to. Lord, we pray for that sister right now. I pray that you're working everything out. We're praying for her deliverance. We're praying for restoration. Father yeah. God, I pray that you touch her life, and we all agree, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Miss Bev How uh, Solomon, she's in the house this morning. She just sent us a shout-out on Facebook as well, man. So shout-out to Miss Bev uh, Solomon. Good morning. Angel Green, she's tuning in this morning. Pat Crowder is watching this morning. Charles Millsap is watching this morning. Uh, Tanya Henry. So many different. People. She said, pray for my daughter in Beaumont. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we touch and agree right now for her daughter in Beaumont, a specific location, that whatever she needs, that you will work it in all together for her good, according to your word. We touch and agree right now. We lift her up. There's no distance in the spirit. She can feel it even right now in Beaumont, that there's a group of witnesses touching and agreeing for her deliverance in the name of Jesus can somebody shout amen? Amen. Yeah. Man, this is so wonderful that yeah. we're able to do that. It's dope. Just because they're virtual, it doesn't mean anything. Doesn't they matter. can still be engaged, still be involved, and God can still work things out even through a camera. Don't we know that? Yes, sir. Man, I love it. I'm excited, man. I'm excited as well. Are y'all still excited to be in the house of the Lord this morning? I got a question for somebody. Okay. I want to ask, I wanna, can I ask you? I want to ask you, what was the hardest part about being away from the house of God for 14 months? Somebody say, ooh. <laughs> can, you, can you answer that? The hardest part about being away was being so set and doing a schedule of being able to come to the house. It was hard not to be here when you are accustomed to doing it. So I don't want to say I did it religiously, but it was scheduled on my agenda every Sunday. So that was a hard adjustment for, yeah. for my family. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody say, shake it up. Like, that's what happened in these 14 months. God shook up our routine. He shook up our schedule. How many of y'all can declare that I will never take church for granted ever again? Like, when the doors open, I'm going to be early. 
I'm going to wake up and I'm going to get to the house of the Lord. Yes, sir, what you got, Pastor? Hey, we have the same question for Miss Mary. What was the hardest thing about being away from the house of God in 14 months? The hardest thing was not gathering in the house. I was here because I'm an employee, but we weren't having service. And the hardest thing was not gathering in the house, not seeing all these wonderful people that we usually see on Sundays. And I just want you to know I miss you guys. I love you, and I'm glad you're here today. We're celebrating the return of the church. Amen. Hey, hey, keep that, keep that mic with Miss Mary. Keep that mic with Miss Mary. I have a prayer request, Miss Mary. Um, uh, someone's daughter is going through chemotherapy. Can you send up a prayer for her really quick, please? Yes, sir. Father, we come right now. We lift up this child that's going through chemotherapy. Father, you already know who it is. And by the stripes of Jesus, we declare this morning that that yeah. child is healed. Lord God, we thank you that there will be no recurrence where they have to do chemotherapy again. We thank you for a complete healing now, Lord God, and we bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, y'all, Miss Mary can pray for me any day in Jesus' name. What you got, Pastor Caleb? Uh, man, as Miss Mary mentioned, and I'm pretty sure a lot of us feel the same way, yeah. where it starts off going to church and then the church members become family. Mm. And I know a lot of people can uh, agree with that. They feel that way. Yeah. And, man, it's so true. You come here one day, you meet certain people, and, I mean, you begin to fellowship with them, and you, you spend time with them, you're praying with them in the house of God, and, man, those people become closer than an actual brother or actual yes, sister. Sir. And yes, sir. certain people become moms to certain yeah. people in this ministry. Yeah. And we are truly a family here yeah. at Word of Restoration. Come on, come on, come on. So, man, hey, today is a family reunion, man. I'm glad to be at the reunion. Yeah. Let's go. I am excited. If you feel the same way, make some noise. Let's go. Hey, I, I think my side a little liver than your side over there. I'm just saying. My I'm side just is, saying. Well, your side might be louder, but my side is more sanctified. You, you going to go there? Yeah, I'm going to go there with you this morning. Okay, okay. I, Can I, I get some love my side? It's my side right here. They, they just feel bad for you. That's all. That's all. They know you're not from Texas. Man, let us know. Where you from, man? I'm from Kansas City, Missouri, home of the Chiefs. You, you see, you see, you see, you see the love you got after that? Hey, can, can I do something real quick, Pastor? Let's do Listen it. up, y'all. We have Apostle and Lady Perry in the building. This, can we make some noise? Man. How many are ready for the word this morning? Ooh, we. Man, we have some wonderful leaders who have led us through a global pandemic. Come on. Come on. Come on. There are some ministries who had to shut down yeah. for whatever reason. Yes, sir. And we are so thankful that we didn't have yes, to. Yes, and sir. we are glad that we are here today. But we want to give a special shout out to our leaders once again. Hey, Pastor, we got one minute. Let's do, let's do one last prayer. Um, we have we have this lady here f praying for mental illness. Can you close us out with that prayer? And listen, y'all, we about to turn up and go into worship. How many of y'all are excited and ready to get into worship this morning? Go ahead and get on your feet. Come on, as stand soon as to we your finish feet. this prayer, we're going straight into praise and worship. Praise God. Father God, we lift this lady up to you on this morning, praying for her mental health. Father God, we know that is a serious problem in our society today. And Father God, if it's anybody who can fix it, it is you. And so we're leaning on you this morning. We're counting on you this morning. And so I'm asking that you touch her body from the top of her head to the soles of her feet. And we are declaring that she's healed and made whole by your son's stripes. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Put your hands together. Hallelujah. I was glad when they said unto me, come let us go into the house of the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. Somebody come on and rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Father, we bless you today. Here we go. I will sing praises unto my King. Yeah. I will sing praises. 
is creator of everything. He is creator of everything. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. I will exalt him, his name adore, yeah. Honor and reverence forevermore. Honor and reverence forevermore. We live, we live our hands to our God. To our
deserves. Hallelujah. 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 We bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't stop praising Hallelujah. Him. We know that you are holy, God. Yes, you and are. And we God. welcome you in this place, oh God. We reverence you. Sing your presence in here, oh God. Hallelujah. Well, we know where your presence is, oh God. Hallelujah. There is fullness of joy. Yes, God. We, we welcome you. you in this place, Jesus. We welcome you in this place, oh God. We welcome you in our hearts, God. Oh, Lord. Come on in the room, Jesus. Hallelujah. There's nothing worth more that could ever come close. Nothing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. Oh, Lord, Lord. It's Jesus. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of love where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Thank you, Jesus. Your presence, Lord. Come on, sing it. Say, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come flood this place, Lord. Your glory, God. To be overcome by your presence. Oh, 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 Lord, say your presence. Oh, Lord, your presence. Oh, God, we welcome you, Jesus. Oh, Let's lift it up. Say there's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more. That could ever come that could close. Ever come close. Nothing, nothing can compare. Can compare. You're our living hope, You're Lord. Living hope. Oh, yes, you are. Say your presence. Your presence. We welcome oh. you in this place. We welcome you here. I've tasted and seen. The sweetest of love, where my heart and my shame and my shame and my shame is undone. Say your presence, oh Lord, Lord, say Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. Come flood this place, Lord. Oh, my Lord. Your glory, God. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Say, Holy Spirit. We welcome you here, Jesus. Come in this place, oh Lord, oh God. Glory, God, is what alone 
experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of yes, your presence. Let us experience you, Jesus. Let us experience you, oh God. Let us become of your presence, Lord. Let us experience God. We need it, Lord. We need it, God. Let us become. Yeah. Yeah, Lord. Let us experience you. We need it, Lord. We need it, Lord. We need it. You. We welcome you in this place. Come flood this place. We need your glory. We need your glory to be overcome by your presence. Oh, come on, lift it up high. Say your presence. Oh, how we love, oh, how we love your presence, Jesus. Oh, how we need it, oh, how we need your presence, Lord. Oh, how we love it, oh, how we love your presence. We need it, your presence, Lord. Oh, Lord. Oh, how we love your presence, Lord. Oh, how we love your presence, Jesus. Oh, how we need. This morning. Can you bless, oh, Cole, don't patty cake him this morning. Can you bless the Lord this morning? Were you glad when they said unto you, let us go back into the house of the Lord? Were you happy and excited to hear the words the church is open again? Are you excited that we have returned to worship? and Word of Restoration International Church. God kept you, he blessed you. It could have been another way, but you're here to worship him. You're here to praise. You're here to give him glory this morning. To God be the glory for the things he has done, for keeping us from dangers seen and unseen, for preserving us in the midst of a pandemic for allowing us to have our reasonable portion of health and strength. Come on, somebody. God is just good like that. Are you grateful this morning? Are you grateful this morning? He didn't bring us this far to leave us. And so we welcome you in the name of Jesus. Back to worship here at Word of Restoration International Church. After 14 months, we're just glad to be back in the house. Amen. If you're worshiping with us online, we just shout out to you this morning. We love you. We're grateful for you. You're in the house too. You're just in the house, in your house. Amen. Amen. We're so glad that each and every one of you have joined us this morning. Let us bow in prayer. Eternal God, our Father, we just thank you, Lord. We thank you for being a lifter. We thank you for being a lover of our souls. We thank you for being a liberator, oh God. We thank you that you've allowed us to come back into this place, into your presence, oh God. We thank you for your spirit that's resting, ruling, and abiding, even now in the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you for your precious Holy Ghost, oh Father. We thank you for hedging us up with protection. We thank you for our families. We thank you for our homes. We thank you for your sustaining power, oh God. For your blessing power, oh God. For your anointing power, oh God. We thank you for it, oh God. So now as we come to receive a word for our restoration, oh God, we are back in the house, Lord God, to receive a word for our restoration. We thank you for what you've done up until this point. We thank you for everything that you've allowed to take place, Lord God, to be, keep us connected. And so we bless you that we're able to see family face to face. 
Lord God, even if it's a portion, oh God, until that moment comes when we can all gather together again, God. We're grateful. We're grateful for this phase, and we anticipate the next, oh God. We bless you, Lord. We love you this morning. We had 10,000 tongues. We couldn't thank you enough, but we thank you with the one we have. For no rocks will cry out in our place today. In Jesus' name, to God be the glory. Let the church say amen. And now, if you would, turn your attention to our screens for our video announcements. These are your announcements for Restoration News at our Rose Sharon location. We are restoring lives with the Word of God. Has your, your life, life been, been restored? restored? My life has been restored. My lives have been restored. My life has been restored. My lives have been restored. My life has been restored. My life has been restored. My life has been restored. Our lives have been restored. My life has been restored. Our lives have been restored. My life has 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 been restored. Our lives have been restored. Our lives have been restored. My life has been restored. We have been restored. My life has been restored. My life has been restored. My life. 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 We have our life. Our life. The proper time is now. We are returning to worship on the campus of Word of Restoration International Church. We will be so excited to see you. However, you must register to attend. There will be safety protocols in place and we'll take every precautionary measure possible to keep you safe. Visit WORIC.org for additional information and to register. grateful for the support you have shown Word of Restoration through your continued giving. We appreciate your sacrifice and commitment to restoring lives with the Word of God. The kingdom work continues because of your faithfulness. For your convenience, there are several ways to give. Online at WORIC.org under the Give tab. Via the Text to Give method. By utilizing our secure Give app via U.S. mail to P.O. Box 569 in Fresno, Texas, 77545. Contactless drop-off at our WORIC administrative offices. Regardless of how you give, know that you are appreciated and the blessing of God is continuously declared over you and your household. These are your announcements for Restoration News at our Rose Sharon location. We are restoring lives with the Word of God. And when your life is restored, you shall have double, 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 double. Come on, let's put our hand. Come on, you can do better than that. Let's put our hands together and bless the Lord. Come on. Come on, let's give the Lord the praise that he deserves. Let's give God the praise like he has really kept us, that he has really preserved us. And he has really sustained you. Come on, if you know it was God, you're not guessing about it. You're not doubting it. You're not going back and forth concerning it. You know God kept you. You know it was nobody but God who sustained you. It was nobody but God 
who made those enemies that were trying to overcome you that God, he stepped in right in the nick of time. Come on, somebody ought to be ready to bless him this morning. Come on, it's a blessing to be in the house. It's a blessing to be anywhere. I said it's a blessing to be anywhere, but especially to be in the house of the Lord. Come on, it wasn't our goodness. Come on, somebody. It wasn't that we've been so good. It wasn't that we did everything right. But for some reason, God just kept us. Come on, tell your neighbor. Well, tell yourself, say, God kept me. Come on, say, say it was God that kept me. Come on, it was God that kept me. Come on, it was God that kept me. The alarm clock didn't wake me up. God woke me up. Amen. My alarm system didn't protect me. Angels encamped themselves about my property and they kept me and I laid down in peace and I dwelt in safety because of God. Come on somebody, give him, give him some praise this morning. Come on, give him praise like he deserves it. Give him the praise that he's due. Give him an undignified praise. He kept you in peace. He kept your heart filled with joy. He kept your mind sane. He deserved our praise this morning. Glory be to God. Woo! Glory be to God. You know, when we look back over just this past 14 months, that many people who were with us, they're no longer with us. And we pray for their families and we pray for their strength during their loss, but not just them, but all the loss that we have encountered just within this short period. But God, and, and we can't take the credit for it. People lost jobs and lost homes and had to make all kind of adjustments, but we already had the word of the Lord that this would be a time of adjustments. And we have made adjustments, and look at us. We are in the house of the Lord. The Bible said there was only one that returned to say thank you. And we know that people who are watching us online that wanted to be here and could not be here because of our capacity limits right now, but you're online and you're connected, and I believe you returned to say thank you. Come on, say, I return to say thank you. If, if you're watching, just put it in the chat. I returned to say thank you. Anybody got anything to thank him for? <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on, lift those hands as we take a moment to thank him. Thank you, Lord. Everybody, thank you. You, Lord, say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Come on with a grateful heart. Say it again. Thank you, Lord. Come on, has he made a way for you? Thank you, Lord. Say it again. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, Lord. Now say this, you made a way. You made a, a way. Come on, yes, he did. He did it. You made a way. Everybody say you made a way. And I just want to thank you. Let's say that again. Come on, say it from your heart. You made a way. Yes, you did. Nobody but you, you made 
Father, we thank you. Father, you thank you. Father, we thank you. Oh, you may away. You may away. You may away. Come on, thank him. He did that. May away. You may away. Yes, you did, Father. When we couldn't see a way, you may Way. You didn't know how it was going to turn out for you. Away. Come on, did he make a way for you? Away. Yes, you did. You made away. Come on, bless him this morning. Father, we thank you for being a way maker. We thank you for being a promise keeper. We thank you for being our healer. We thank you for being our deliverer. Father, we thank you for keeping us. We thank you, Father, for sustaining us and for preserving us. Father, we thank you that when we couldn't see our way out, you made a way for us. And Father, we pray for the people this morning. Father, you know where they are. You know every circumstance. You know every situation. Father, you know every dilemma. You know every fight that they're in. And I thank you, Father, that you are the one who fights our battles for us. And so, Father, we praise you this morning. We glorify you this morning. And we honor you this morning for giving us the victory. Father, I pray for those who have sickness in their bodies. I thank you that during this time of gathering that you will touch them. Even those who are online, you will touch them right where they are. Ease that pain. Heal that sickness or that disease in the name of Jesus. Give them peace wherever they are in the midst of their storm. Father, cause them to laugh again. Cause them to rejoice again. Cause them to leap again. Let a praise well up in their bellies and let them open their mouths and bless you. Father, we thank you that you are a good God. You are a great God. There's no one else like you and we bless you this day. It's in the name of Jesus the Christ we pray and everybody shouted amen. Hallelujah. You may have your seats in the presence of God. I'm excited about the word today. I'm excited about, I'm just excited about being in the house of God. It is, I tell you. You know, I was sharing with my wife, you know, when you're, when you're in something, it seems like it's a lifetime. And then when you get out of it, just on the other side of it, you're like, you know what, that wasn't long at all. And we've been away from the house of God for 14 months. Now, that's a long time to be away from the house of God. But I pulled up this morning. I said, you know, that time has really went by. That wasn't that long at all. Now, I don't want another 14 months, but it wasn't that long at all. Praise God. But God is a good God, and God is a faithful God. It is so good to see those of you who are here and then those who are connected again. Thank you so very much for being connected, and thank you for joining us this morning. <clears throat> I'd like to just have a family, maybe two, depending on how the first one do. I'd like, to have, <laughs> I'd like to have a family to just come and just share with us. Um, 
you know, what this time has been for you and what is it like to be in the house of God this morning. If you would come quickly, and they'll get a microphone, if you would come very quickly and, and share that. Please, ma'am, please, sir. Just, just a family, someone just come and share that. Okay, I'll move on now. I'm sorry. Okay, sure. Can I get a microphone, please? And just, you know, just what this time has has been like for you and your family, and, and what is it like? Were you glad when they said unto you, let us go into the house of the Lord? And so we have Charles and Dr. Alice Millsap, if you would go good ahead. Good morning, Word of Restoration. Good morning. Well, it's so good to see everybody's face. We can't see you smiling, but we see your face, and we just right. want to bless God this morning. Thank you, Apostle and Lady Perry for all that you've done through this pandemic. It means so much to me and my husband to be here today. We, we both suffered with COVID during this time, and so we're just thankful to be alive. Yes, we're yes, come on. To come, be on. Alive. come on, come because on, come on. so many people didn't make it. Even in my own family, I lost three first cousins. I lost two clients. And it's just great. I'm just grateful. Sure. I'm so grateful to see you. Yes, yes. I'm just grateful. And I just thank our pastor for keeping us connected, even though we were so far apart in person. But to be here today and to see your faces and to see my pastor and Lady Perry and all of my friends, yes. it just feels so good. Even if I can't touch you, it feels good. There's something yes. about the presence yes. of God. And there's something about when you get in his presence and you connect with others in his presence, that there is a Holy Ghost charge in the house. Glory and the Lord God. said he's going to charge us up today. So I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm Glory grateful. To God. I'm grateful. Glory to God. Ditto. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Come on, give them a hand. Thank you. First of all, giving honor to God, who yes, is the head of my life. I just want to tell the Word of Restoration family what a blessing you are to me, my Praise family, God. Word Praise of Restoration. God. Because at this place, I, my life was restored. Mm. I can attest that during COVID, I lost the ability to walk mm. and to speak. Mm. But through God's deliverance mm. and his grace. Come on. Come on. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I'm speaking to you. And I know it's nothing but the prayers yeah. that have brought me here today. Sure. So my life is a testimony. And I go and I tell that testimony to everyone that I meet. Yes. I said it's through God's grace. Yes, it is. That I'm here today showing you how to walk yes. and how to talk. Not having the ability to speak. It's hard for me because I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> But when he gave me the words that were coming out, they were just flowing, yeah. just flowing. They told me in January, they said, well, I went to the hospital with another TIA. And uh, I woke up and I couldn't walk. So they said, well, you need surgery on your back. I said, no, this is in God's hands. Yes. yes. I said, I don't need you to cut on me. I just need to keep praying about it and he will give me the answer. And you can see Glory right now you. that I'm standing on my own. With yeah, no assistance. yeah, yes, you are. Yes, you are. And it's nothing but God. Yes, you are. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Give, come on, give them a hand clap of praise. Isn't that good? They both had COVID. God healed them, and she couldn't see, couldn't walk, and. And, and she found her way up here. She's back in the house of God, healed in Jesus' name. Our God is a healer. Glory be to God. Yes, ma'am. When they said, let's go into the house of the Lord, I ran. <laughs> because he's been so good. 
uh, I saw a lot of people around me lose their lives. I had a son in Hungary, Pull your mic up all the way across the, uh, the seas. And my God was there with him. He brought him back home, healthy and strong. Mm. And if I tell you that every Sunday that this church had their program on television, I was up dressed, makeup on, half home, standing in my living room, raising my hands. Yeah. Because I know that when the praises go up, the blessings come down. And then my body tried to be attacked. It wasn't COVID, but you know how the enemy do. He uses the same old videotape yeah. that he's used on everyone since God kicked him out of the heavens. But I still raised my hands. Glory and to I God. still shouted and I still praised my God because the word told me that he was with me no matter what. And so I believed it. This church carried me and I want to thank you for the programs that you had on all throughout COVID. Yes. Because that was the plan. Glory to God. That was God's plan to keep us. And I just want to praise him. And I couldn't, I'm in the overflow, but I couldn't sit. I had to come let y'all know that he brought my baby home. <laughs> come on. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Glory to God. Thank you so very much. Come on, isn't that powerful? And to those of you who are in the overflow, we bless you. Thank you so much for being here, and thank you for your patience. Can we give them a great big hand clap of praise for being in the overflow. Glory to God. Well, listen, as you saw in the video announcements, continue to use the, uh, the social media platforms and, and, uh, and methods that you've been using for your giving. Let's continue to do that. Those of you, if you have an envelope right to the rear uh, of, the, of the sanctuary uh, to the, where the exit doors are, there are provision boxes for those of you if you had an envelope and you just wanted to give via the envelope um, right there where Miss Kiosha is. That's the provision box that the camera would just flash there so people can see that, see that provision box. Those are the provision boxes uh, there. Uh, he gonna go down a little bit so you could see it. Um, okay, that's the provision box. And so if you're exiting and you have an envelope and you'd like to give, you can, you can do that. Also at the end of the worship experience while they're showing the provision box at the end of the worship experience. Those of you who respond to the appeals, uh, you will receive a card. You'll receive a card. We won't take you uh, like we normally do. We will not have you escorted to our personal harvest room, but you'll receive a card and you'll complete that card. It's, it's very simple, very quick. You'll complete that and you will place that card in that provision box as you exit and we will respond to you. Uh, on next week. All right, listen, I'm ready to worship God, so we're going to have a song of worship uh, that's going to usher us into the presence of God, and then we're going to be ready for the Word of God today, and we'll see what God says. Amen? All right, let's receive the ministry team. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody grateful that we serve a Father who can keep us and sustain us, never leave us nor forsake us. Hallelujah, We're, you're worthy, God. If you don't mind, just lift up a worship to him. He's worthy, he's deserving. You're deserving, Lord. Bless your name. You're more real than this ground I'm standing on. And you're more real than the wind in my lungs. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me. You are my reality. Is he anybody's reality? Oh, 
You're so real to me, God. My heart sings, Abba. close to us, God. Say, you're more real. You're more real than the song on my the song tongue. On my tongue. And it's your thoughts that define me, Lord. Your thoughts define me. You're inside of me. and say, oh! Ah. Uh-huh. 
If you would take a moment right there and just love on Abba, take a moment to just worship Abba. Thank you, Father. Come on, take this time and just, just worship him and just, just love on him. He is Abba. He is your daddy God. Abba, Father, we belong to you. We belong to you. Father, we thank you for being our father. Thank you for being our daddy God. Thank you for being a father who cares for us. Thank you for being a father who perfects all that concerns us. We bless you this morning, Father. We thank you for not forsaking us. We thank you for never leaving us. We thank you for guiding us. We thank you for strengthening us. For you are daddy God. For you are our Father. You're not just our God, but you are our Father. And our spirits bear witness that you are our Father and that we are your children. Thank you for being a loving Father. Thank you for being a Father who cares. Daddy God, you are Abba. And we bless you, Father. And we thank you. You care for sparrows and you feed them. How much more will you care for us, your own children? So, Father, we thank you. Daddy, we thank you this morning. And we come to this place and we come to this house to worship you, to honor you, and to bless your name. And, Father, we posture ourselves in your presence and in this atmosphere to hear what you will say to this house and what you'll say to those who are part of this house but are just not here. Thank you for those who don't even know at this time that they will be planted in this house. And I thank you that you'll speak to them as well. So, Father, we yield ourselves unto you. Holy Spirit, you are the teacher. You lead us and you guide us into truth. And our spirits will bear witness with that truth. And we bless you and we praise you in the mighty name of Jesus the Christ. Amen. Glory to God. Father, how we thank you and we praise you today. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, bless your name, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Will you just take a moment to reflect on, on God's goodness? Reflect on God's compassion and God's willingness to sustain and keep us. We thank you, Father. Glory to your name. Thank you, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Thank you, Father. Oh, bless your name, Father. Thank you, Lord. I want to call your attention this morning to three passages of Scripture. These reference scriptures are foundation scriptures come from Luke chapter 24, Acts chapter 1, and Acts chapter number 2. Luke 24, Acts chapter 1, and Acts chapter number 2. And as I sought the Lord and gave much thought, consideration, and prayer to what I believe, the Spirit of God wanted to impart in our hearts during this, our first in live uh, worship experience since Sunday, March the 15th, 2020. So I was led to these three passages of Scripture, Luke 24, Acts chapter 1, and Acts 
chapter number two. And though it's been over 14 months, our vision continued, our assignment remained, and our ministry to others did not cease. That God, as only he can, provided a way for us to continue to touch lives, to continue to impact lives, to continue to get the word of God to those who were in need and those who were hurting and understood the importance of a healthy spiritual diet as faith does come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And so even though it was a, a process, we did not become weary during that process. Thank God for his word that God always knows how to minister to us exactly where we are. Even when others are not aware of where we are, God knows exactly where we are. The scripture says that we do not have the kind of high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities. The Message Bible says it like this, that God is not out of touch with our reality. That whatever your reality is, God, as it were, keeps his hand on the pulse of your reality. He knows exactly where you are. And the very word that you needed at the time that you needed, God had that particular word there for you. Can you say amen to that? And even though you're sitting here this morning in this sanctuary, sitting in the house of God, and those who are watching me online, it is no different today. God knows exactly where you are. God knows exactly what you need to hear. God, as a parent, knows what's best for us even when we don't recognize it ourselves. Amen. And that's why everything that we go through, everything we experience, some kind of way, God makes it work for our good. Glory to God. In Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 49, and this is Jesus talking. He says, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you. The promise of my Father upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Somebody say power from on high. Glory to God. Tarry in Jerusalem, in that city, that, that holy place, until you be endued with power power from on high. And he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. And it came to pass, while he blessed them, he was departed from them and carried up into heaven where the power was coming from. Glory to God. And they worshipped him and returned to the city of restoration. I can't hear nobody. I'm going to try to, I'm going to try to stay in here. <laughs> they returned to the city of restoration with great joy. I can't hear nobody. I can't, I can't hear nobody. They, they returned with great... They, they did not return with a whisper. They did, not, they did not go to a library where they had to keep quiet. They returned. You, you can't be glad to be in the house and not make some noise when you get in the house. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let's go into the house. 
And you don't be glad to go into the house and then get quiet when you get to the house. If you're glad and you know it, then your mouth ought to show it. Hallelujah. Woo, Jesus. <laughs> Glory to God. Oh, man. Oh, Jesus. Mm, my, 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 my. My, 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 my. He returned with great joy. And, 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 glory to God. And it wasn't just for that return Sunday. Verse 53 says, and they were continually in. I ain't just here because it's the first Sunday. I'm not just here for the comeback. I'm not just here to spectate and, and see what it feels like to see if this is what I want to do. The Bible said, and we're continually in the temple praising and blessing God. Somebody say amen. 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 Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1. And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father, which said, He, ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water. But ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. Oh, my God. I, I see, that's a, that's a, he said, John truly baptized with water. You've been there. He says, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Somebody say another level. I come to tell you today, I don't know where you've been, but you've been now. There is another level that God, there's something else that God is getting ready to take you into. There's another level for you. There's another dimension for you. He's telling you, don't get stuck on what you already had. Don't get stuck on the way that it used to be. Maybe you made a million last year. Don't you dare get stuck there. There's another level. There's another level, he says. He says, John baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Somebody shout another level. He says, not many days hence. And it ain't going to be long, people of God. I don't, I don't know what. Look, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I, I'm going to show you in just a moment if we can get there. But you better be glad you came here today. You better be glad you're connected today. I'm telling you, this day is more than what you think it is that God has set us up, that God has set you up. God had you in mind. When God set the date for us to come back on the 23rd, he had you in mind because he wanted to do something in you your life that's going to take you to another level. You're about to experience some things you've never experienced before. You're about to enjoy some things that you've never enjoyed before. God's about to show you some things that you've never seen before. It's another level. Watch this. Watch this. If you don't think so, drop down to verse number eight. But ye shall, this is, this is at the next level. But ye shall receive power. <laughs> Which means you don't have it yet. Now this is Jesus talking to the disciples. I'm in the text. He's talking to the disciples. You're about to receive what you don't have. Who am I talking to? You are about to receive what you don't have. Watch this. You need it, but don't have it, but you're about to get it. I don't know who I'm talking to. He says, you need power. You don't have power, but you're about to receive power. Not many days hence. I, 
I don't know what you, I don't know what you need. You don't have it, but you're about to receive it. And it's not going, according to the text, it's not going to be long. He said, not many days hence. I wish I had some folk who had expectation in this house this morning. Come on, you got to get your, you got to get your mind off everything. Turn me up. You got to get your mind off everything else around you. You got to get your mind off what's happening at the house. You got to be able to tap into this moment. This is a divine moment. We're not just here just to be here. You're not just connected just to be connected. We could have been anywhere. You could have connected to anything, but God has set you up for another level. Another level in your business, another level in your ministry, another level in your finance, another level in your health, another level in your marriage, another level with those children, another level. He says, after that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Look at chapter 2. Look at chapter 2. He just told him it's not going to be long. Look at chapter 2. And when the day of Pentecost, is is that today? Now, I know you're not Jewish, but you don't have to be Jewish to know that the 23rd is the day of Pentecost. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, They were all with one accord. Oh, come on now. This side wasn't thinking about the turkey that's at home. See, if we want to see power, we got to get on one accord. We got got to be here for the same. Ain't nobody here to see they boo. Ain't nobody here trying to network. Ain't nobody here trying to connect. Ain't nobody here trying to do none of that. No, no, no. I come to see him. I come to worship him. I come to honor him. I come to bless him. I holler at you later. I come to see him. I need to see him right now. I need to worship him right now. They were all in one place, and they were on one accord. What's the use of being in one place if you're not going to be on one accord? And many times we don't see the miracles, we don't see the manifestation of power because we can't get everybody on one accord. Some people watching the clock, some people watching the time, some people watching when this go in, some people watching, I wonder what's next. We got to get on one accord. I'm telling you, that's power in unity. And when we are on one accord, I just want to see him. Listen, people of God, when you go to a concert, you go to concert to see one person. So much so, if that one person doesn't come out, you leave disappointed, mad, angry, want your money back. Why? Because I came to see so-and-so. What y'all doing with this other guy up here? Okay, if he just going to be here for a minute, get off the stage so the real person can come that I came to see, then I get that. I'm down with that. But don't try to put somebody else up there when I came to see somebody else. Is there anybody in this house today that came to see him, that came to worship him? He says they were with one accord in one place, and suddenly. (laughs) And suddenly, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, just, just, just suddenly, just something shifted, the atmosphere just shifted, something just just changed, something dropped, something came in that wasn't in when we came in, something changed. He said, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, all of a sudden, there came a sound from heaven like a wind, like a wind rushing, like a tornado came. He, He said, all of a sudden, there came a sound. They heard something. And that sound filled all the house where they were sitting. I pronounce 
a house blessing for you. Something's going to fill your house. I don't know who I'm talking. I don't, I, don't I don't know what's been going on in your house, but something's going to come in. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, something's going to come in like a rushing mighty wind that's going to fill that room where your son is, that's going to fill that room where your daughter is, that's going to fill that place your husband been going to. It's going to fill all the house where you're sitting. Notice what the text says. It says it filled all the house where they were sitting. You're going to be sitting in your house and start sensing the glory. Come on, have you? Come, come on, you better hear what I'm saying. You just, you just going to be watching a movie. Just sitting there watching a movie. Just sitting there in your office, on your computer, and all of a sudden, you're going to sit something. You're going you to feel something all of a sudden. It filled all the house. How would you like God's presence to fill all your house? Even, even, the, even the part of your house, you're not ready for him to fill. Where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it set up on each of them. These tongues resembled fire. These tongues that resembled fire. Tongues of fire set up on them. You got to see that. Tongues of fire. Have you, ever, have you ever been sitting? Have you ever been sitting? And, and, and while you're sitting, something drops on you? And what do you do? <laughs> All of a sudden, while they were sitting, a fire fell, and it, and it set up on each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Let's, let's look at, just based on what we read from these three passages, let's look at, three, at five apparent observations of Pentecost. Five apparent observations of Pentecost, just based on what we just read. Number one, the first obvious uh, and apparent observation of Pentecost is the promise of of the Father, the promise of the Father. Jesus said, I will send the promise of the Father upon you. Then he gives the command that they were not to depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. So the first apparent observation we see regarding Pentecost is the promise of the Father. The second apparent observation we see is Pentecost at its fullest. Pentecost at its fullest. The text says, when the day of Pentecost was fully come. So this is Pentecost at its fullest. If you look at number three, the third apparent observation is the presence of fire. The presence of fire. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. It filled all the house where they were sitting and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like Fire, tongues representing fire, and it's set upon each of them. This is on the day of Pentecost, so we see the presence of fire. Number four, we see the person of the Holy Spirit filling. The person of the Holy Spirit filling. And they were all filled 
with the Holy Ghost. Remember, it was John who said, he said, I baptize with water. He said, there's one coming after me whose shoes I am not worthy to unleash. He's going to be the one that's going to baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Do you not know we need fire in our lives? And then number five, number five, number one, we see the promise of the Father. We see Pentecost at its fullest. We see the presence of fire. We see the person of the Holy Spirit filling. But then number five, we see prophecy being fulfilled. Prophecy being fulfilled. Peter, he said, this is that. Because further down in chapter 2, uh, they, they said, now what, what all this mean? What, what is this? They're drunk. But Peter said, yeah, they're drunk, but they're not drunk like you suppose. He said, it's only 9 o'clock in the morning. Nobody gets drunk at 9 o'clock in the morning. Maybe at 9 o'clock, but not 9 o'clock in the morning. That, that's what Peter said. He said, this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days. God said, see, I like to look at, see, the last days, the last days is like a coin that has two sides to it. And we like to look at one side of the coin of the last days, and that is we are in the last days. This is happening. That is happening. Uh, children disobedient to parents and, and, and blasphemous and, and all of these things about the last day. But then there's another side to the coin of the last day. In the last day, God going to pour out his spirit. And if we would focus on what God is doing rather than what the enemy is doing in the last day, we can see the power of God at work in our lives. He said in the last day, this is prophecy being fulfilled. In the last days, I'm going to pour out my spirit upon all flesh. You don't have to just be a minister, an elder, a, a bishop. Uh, you can just be in the parking lot and God's pouring out his spirit upon, upon all flesh. You say, I'm not even in the parking lot. I barely come to church. I come to church every other Sunday, every other month. You too. He can pour out. This is the day that God's pouring out. This is your next level. You're not going to your next level without the power and presence of the Holy Ghost. He said he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters are going to prophesy. Your young men are going to see vision and your old men are going to, going to dream dreams. I'm going to pour out my spirit upon. Something's coming up on you. Hmm. Come on, say that. Say something's coming up on me. Come, come on, if you're if you watching me online, I need you to type it. Something's coming up on me and it's coming from above but something is coming up up on you that's what happened with Jesus in Luke chapter 4 he says the spirit of the Lord God is up on me it came up on him thus he was anointed to preach so he had the power the reason the Holy Ghost comes up on us is to give us power power that we do not have without the Holy Ghost coming up on us he said the Holy Ghost came upon him and he was able to preach the gospel to the poor to heal the brokenhearted to set at liberty them that were brew and preach the acceptable year of the Lord to open up eye, the eyes of those who were blind but he took power for that to happen in Luke chapter 1 verse 35 Mary who's just a teenage of a girl the Holy Ghost came up on her and she received the power to give birth to something supernatural I'm talking to somebody who's been barren. God will come up on you. The Holy Ghost will come up on you and give you the power.
power to give birth to something supernatural. I don't know what you're trying to give birth to. Maybe you're trying to give birth to a business idea. Maybe you're trying to give birth to your next level, your next dimension. Maybe you're trying to get birth to something. Maybe you've been too weak to push and you've not been able to bring forth. You got the dream, but you can't birth it. You see the vision, but you can't birth it. You have that idea, but you can't birth it. You want to do something else, but you just can't give birth to it. I'm telling you that something's going to come up on you that's going to enable you to give birth to something supernatural. Holy Ghost came up on the disciples and they had power to witness. It came up on the Gentile believers in Acts chapter 10 and they had power to magnify God. Watch this, people of God. It came up on the suffering saints as Peter wrote to them. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 14, If ye be reproached for the name of Christ, happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God rested upon you. What is that? The power to sustain. The power to sustain. The reason you're here this morning is because something came up on you and you possess the power to sustain. God brought you through. God kept you. God took care of you. God hid you. God kept you reserved. God protected you. God shielded you. The power to sustain. For the rest of the way, we'll get as far as we can. But I want to talk about the Holy Ghost Field Church. The Holy Ghost Field Church. In 2012, gospel recording artist Alicia Keys, R&B single Alicia Keys, she recorded this song in 2012. She released it in 2012. The song is entitled Girl on Fire. And in the lyrics she said, this girl is on fire. And my subtopic is, this church is on fire. Come on, it's time to get on fire, man. Come on, it's time to burn for him. It's time to get on fire. You can't let the world fan you and put your fire out. The Bible said you'll be baptized with the Holy Ghost and with fire. We need fire. Men need fire in their lives. Women need fire in their life. Your children need fire. Everything's burning but the church. The club is hot and jumping and bumping. The honky tonk is fire. It's jumping. It's bumping. The concert is jumping. It's on fire. It's time for the church to get on fire. Somebody shout fire in here. Give me your fire, God. Give me, give me fire, God. I don't want to be an ice cold Christian. Give me the fire. Let me have the fire. When I walk in the job, let me go in with fire. I need fire. I need fire. I need fire. It's set up on them like fire. We need fire. You need fire. You don't need no more money. You need some fire and the money will come. You need fire. You lost your fire. Somebody say fire. Somebody say fire. Say fire. Say fire. Come on, say I need fire. I, can, I need fire. I can't make it without fire. I can't stay married without fire. I lose my mind if it wasn't for the fire. I need fire. There's a reason he said you'll be baptized with Holy Ghost and fire. I heard a story many, many years ago. Old Baptist preacher told this story. He said that was a man who lived across the street from the church. 
It was a small church, but the man lived cross street from the church, and the man would come out, and he'd sit on his steps every Sunday when the church would go in. But he never would go. And the pastor would stop him and invite him. Sir, you're welcome to come to our church. He said, why don't you come this morning? He said, no, Reverend, I won't come. I mean, he sat right there in the same spot. Some of the members would come by. Some of the ushers would ask him the same thing. Sir, why don't you come to our church? Won't you come in? You're always sitting here watching, but you never come in. Won't you come in today? He said, no, I won't come. Then all of a sudden, a couple doors down, house caught on fire. And the man, he jumped up and, and he ran down there. And then all of a sudden, the pastor, he looked up and he wasn't there. And so he went to him. He said, now, sir, why is it, uh, you know, I've been inviting you every Sunday. Some of the members been inviting you every Sunday and, and you never came. But then when you see that house down there burning, you ran down there. He said, Reverend, the reason I never came to the church, because the church is not on fire. What am I saying to you? It's time for us to get on fire. That's what I'm saying. That folk passing by, but they looking for fire. Are you hearing me? You got to have the fire of God. We got to have fire. Say it again. I need fire. I need, I need, I need fire. I need fire. So here we are in the text. This text, it suggests something that we are all familiar with. We're all familiar with the term inauguration. It is akin to expressions such as induction, appointment, launch, the start, or official blessing. Inauguration is defined as the beginning or introduction of a system policy or period. Many know it as a formal admission of someone to office like a president. But more than that, it is a ceremony or a celebration that marks the beginning of something. That an inauguration is a ceremony, a celebration that marks the beginning of something. It means festival or feast day that signifies the ending of one thing and the beginning of something else. So here we are at this biblical inauguration. It is the ending of one thing and the beginning of something else. What am I saying to you? God brought you here today because there's some thing that God is ending in your life and he's starting something new for you. Today is your inauguration. Come on, say that. Say, it's my inauguration. We just come out of Passover which represents and pictures Jesus' death as the Lamb of God. First fruit, which represents resurrection because Jesus is the first fruit of those that sleep. We come out of the Feast of Weeks, which was seven complete weeks of seven where you get 49. Then you run into Pentecost. All of a sudden, now you're at Pentecost, which means 50th. And it is accompanied with Holy Ghost fire. What am I saying to you? God brought you back here today to get your fire back. God got you tied in today. God got you connected. God got you watching so you can get your fire back. I'm telling you, you're not going to be cold any longer. You're not going to be ice cold. God said it himself. I wish you make up your mind because I wish you were either hot or cold. But since you want to be lukewarm, I spew you out of my mouth. People of God, it's time to get hot. It's time to get hot for God. It's time to get hot for the presence of God. It's time to get hot for the passion and purposes of God but it takes the fire. So let me end here. We're at the inauguration, the start of the New Testament church. Pentecost was held 50 days after the feast of first fruit. So as we look at this inauguration of the New Testament church, it's the start of the church and the induction of the Holy Spirit into his new office. He, he's, he's now the teacher. He's now 
the one who leads into all truth. He's being inducted into his new office. Uh, he used to just come up on believers, but now he's infilling the believer. It is his induction into his new office. And at this inauguration, we see the 120 is there. Not only is the 120 there, but a part of the 120, we see the mother of Jesus, she's there. The mockers are there, if you will, let me call them protesters. They are there because Peter, he responds to the mockers and the protesters. Because they're saying this don't make no sense. What's, what's going on with all of this? Y'all acting like drunk men. Peter say, yeah, you got the drunk part right. But what we're drunk on, you got it wrong. He said, this is new wine. Somebody say new wine. Come on, I'm tired of the old stuff. I'm tired of the used to be wine. I want that new wine. And can I tell you this? Just like it was when Jesus turned water into wine. And then the governor, when he tasted it, he said, you have saved the best for last. We are in the last days and God have saved the best for last. Glory. Glory be to God. Peter, he gives, as you have at any inauguration, an inaugural address. Peter stands up and he gives the inaugural address. And in giving the inaugural address, he starts out by addressing the protesters, but then he addresses the public. And he says, this gift and this Holy Ghost that you're seeing experience is for you also. It's for you and it's for your children, but you got to repent and be converted so you too can receive the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, I need the Holy Ghost. Come on, type it in the comments. I need the Holy Ghost. I know you say you need a job, and thank God for that, but you need the Holy Ghost. I know you say you need a little more money. If you can just make a little more money, I hear that. I'm not knocking that, but you need the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost, he know where the money is. The Holy Ghost, he know where the job is. The Holy Ghost, he know where the open door is. The Holy Ghost, he know where your deliverance is. The Holy Ghost, he know where your connection is. The Holy Ghost, he got the answers that you need. The Holy Ghost got the wisdom that you need. You need the Holy Ghost. I'm done. I'm done. We'll pick up next week. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. We need the fire of the Holy Ghost. Come on, say, I need fire. I need I need fire. Come on, say it again. I need, I need fire. I need fire. I need fire. I need fire. God, work on me till I get fire. God, stay with me till I get fire. God, minister to me till I get fire. God, let me stay in your presence till I get the fire. I want to feel the fire of the Holy Ghost. Get your hands lifted right where you are. Get your hands lifted all over this place. All over this place. All over this place. It is not uncommon, it is not unusual. It is not uncommon, it is not unusual to grow cold over this period, over this time, being away from the house of God. The house of God is another place of accountability and being away from the house of God, it is very much possible to, to grow cold to grow weary, to grow cold in my personal devotion, to grow cold in my marriage, to grow cold in ministry, to go, grow cold even when it comes to my thoughts. But we need fire. We need fire. Lord, send your fire. Lord, send your fire. Send your fire to every husband. Send your fire to every wife. Send your fire to every child. Send your fire to every ministry. Send your fire to that business. Let us get our fire back. We stir up that gift. We fan, we fan that flame. And get that fire back to where we jump up and seek you. To where we jump up and depend on you. We jump up 
and trust you. We jump up and begin to go after you to where we jump up and lift our hands. We jump up because the fire is upon us. So God, right now, right now in your presence, right now in your presence, Father, touch us again, fill us again, fill us again, fill us to the full again. Give us a Pentecostal experience, Father, right here in your presence, right there online. Fill us again. Fill us to the full. Fill us till we overflow. Fill us with fire until we lie not to one another. Fill us with fire until we begin to walk in holiness. Fill us with fire until we no longer have a desire for gossip. Fill us with fire until all we want to do is worship you. All we want to do is love you. All we want to do is honor you. All we want to do is seek your faith. Fill us with fire to where we stop leaning to our own understanding. But Father, we start trusting you with all of our heart. And Father, fill us right now, Father. Fill us with the Holy Ghost fire. Give us the passion of God. In the name of Jesus. Father, we cry out to you right now for the ending of one thing, the beginning of something else. This is our inauguration. Not just the church, but individually. Because for the church to be on fire, the people have to be on fire. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Glory to your name, Father. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, Father. Hallelujah, Father. Holy Ghost, fall fresh upon us. Rise in us, Holy Spirit. And fill us again. Fill us again to where we too become like drunk men, become like drunk women. So, Father, we thank you for it. And we bless you for it, Father. Glory to your name. Glory to your name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Ina na na mara, o shete raba kasi te debeke. Brona na na mara ba? Fire, fire. Glory to God. Let your fire fall, Lord. Let your fire fall. We need your fire. We need your fire. We need your fire. Fall fresh on us, Father. Give us fire, Father. Come on, man. Give us fire, Father. Give us fire, Father. Fire fall on us. Anointing fall on us. Holy Ghost fall on us. Fill us to the full. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Let it fall, Father. Thank you, Lord. Come on, cry for fire. Cry out for fire. Cry out for fire. 
Cry out for fire. Cry out for passion. Cry out for fire. Give us your fire, Father. Give us your fire. Consuming fire. Give us your fire. You are our fire, Father. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Slip your hands, everybody. Repeat after me, Father. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me again. Fill me up again. Till I overflow. Fill me with fire. As it was on the day of Pentecost. Fire fell on them. Let your fire fall on me. I yield myself. I surrender myself to your power, to your presence, to your passion. Let your passion consume me. Glory to God. Let the zeal of your house consume me. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. I receive. Holy Spirit, Spirit. afresh. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. I will never be the same again. I have fire. I have fire. I have fire. I have the fire of the Holy Ghost. Now. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father, for the fire. Glory to God. Come on, bless him with the fruit of your lips. 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 You You got to tell yourself every day, I have fire. I'm not worried, I have fire. I'm not afraid, I have fire. I'm not going under, I have fire. I'm going to make it. We have fire, baby. We're going to make it. We have fire. We have the fire. Glory to God. If you're here or watching us and you want to make a decision to give your life to Jesus, to rededicate your life, to come back to him, to recommit yourself all over again, You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You want to join our ministry, be a part of this this church. If you would just lift your hands and we'll have someone to assist you. Our ushers have a card for you. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you want to rededicate, come back to him. You want to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Or you desire prayer for a particular area. You desire prayer for a particular area and raise your hands and the ushers are prepared to assist you and they'll get a card to you. And that card, you'll you'll complete and fill out. Anyone else, just raise your hand. They'll get that card to you. We want to pray with you. We want to minister to you. I see hands lifted in the rear. We want to pray with you. We want to minister to you. Whatever your need is, we don't want you to leave here without that need being met, whatever that need is. And I assure you, We will call you within 24 hours to make contact with you so that we can minister minister to you. We will give you a call. 
Anyone else? Thank you so much. Glory be to God. Thank those of you who are watching us online. Thank you for connecting and watching and being a part of our worship experience. Were you blessed today? Were you blessed today? I still see a few hands. A few hands lifted. Thank you so much. See some hands lifted there. Thank you so much. Man, isn't it good to be back? <laughs> Glory be to God. And so remember to continue to, to register each week. Uh, we had a bunch of people trying to get in this week, but that's okay. We're going to get through this. We made it thus far. We're going to get through this. Amen. We're going to get through this. God is faithful. And before long, we'll all be in here together again. Glory be to God. Amen. Glory to God. All right. Well, if you would stand to your feet. And I think they've asked you not to congregate in the, in the building once you're dismissed in the facility. So if you would respect that, please, ma'am, please, sir. Thank you so much for being here. Uh, remember, we're not here on Wednesday. We're not here on Wednesday, but we still have our Bible study that will be online. It will be online. Um, and so, so make sure you tune in, connect to our Bible study. Don't forget, in the morning, 6 a.m., uh, our 31-day devotion. Haven't they been awesome? They have been phenomenal. We thank God for our, our ministers and sons and daughters who've been doing a great job. Raise your hand so you can receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord cause his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious unto you. The Lord show you his kindness. The Lord give you his peace and he surrounds you with his favor. You go in the blessing of the Lord. We love each of you, and we will see you. They're asking if you would exit the sides. Okay. Uh, the, what is, okay. All right. So you are dismissed. <laughs>